Something that I, I wrote at the beginning of this year, this will be a year of change. Australia will be shaken politically, financially. Men's hearts will fail because of fear. And I believe that we're living in a, in a really, really difficult time, but an exciting time. It's an exciting time because I believe that God can get our attention and that's what God wants more than men and girls, I believe, get hold of us so that we start to think of him. So this morning, I want to speak a little bit about the anointing, the anointing. Father, I ask you to help me today and I ask you, Lord, for a double portion of your anointing. I ask you, Lord, to give me words to be able to speak beyond my ability. I ask you, Lord, that people would have ears to be able to comprehend beyond their ability. Lord, you'd speak right direct into our spirits. And Lord, I pray today that what I share will come out of my spirit. And Lord, for that, we'll give you all the praise, we'll give you all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. The church, the world. It's an amazing thing. I ask myself a couple of questions. Where are we heading? Who and what are we following? What's directing us? On Friday, we went to a funeral of a friend of mine, and uh, he'd been suffering for a while, but he had a great vision, a great gift on his life. He worked in India and places like that. And all the, all the words that were spoken and how good a guy he was and everything like that, but it all boils down. When you get to a funeral, it's very, very sobering. And it doesn't really matter so much what people say about me or you at that particular point of time. It's really what God says. It's what God sees. And they sang a few songs and they said, these songs are Les's favorite songs. And one of the songs that was sung was this, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow him. The world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. You see, when we hit that twilight time of our life, it's really not, as I said, what people say, it's what did I say? What did I do? Who did I let lead me? Did I let the troubles of the world or what? Or did I have some foundational things in my life that God could build on, that I could build my life on. And there are foundational truths that I think that we've all got to build our lives on. And this man had a truth in his heart. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. We know that the enemy wants us to turn back. He wants us to look behind. He wants us to look at the problems of life. But that song that these guys were singing today about God's running after me. It's his goodness. God loves me. God, God cares for me. And because of that knowledge, because we know that, that that God who created the heavens and the earth is running after me, I know we can make it. Amen? you believe you can make it? Booth said this, he said, in the last days, this is what it will be like. He said, they will have religion without the Holy Spirit. They'll have forgiveness without repentance. Conversion without the new birth. Christianity without Christ. Politics without God. And heaven without hell. Mother Teresa said this, a nation that kills babies in the mother's womb, has lost its soul. We see a decline in our nation as the world and all it's got to offer starts to be poured out. And we've seen through the internet and everything else that's available to this modern world today, the way that this horrific outpouring of wrath and goodness knows what has been poured out over our nation and over our kids. 
we just see the decline of our nation in Australia and the nations around the world. We see moral standards that are at such a low ebb. I don't know how far we can go where people think it's funny to run naked across a, 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 a cricket pitch or a football field or something like that in front of thousands of people. And then they, they talk about it on the news and they say, but look, the children were laughing. Men and women, kids don't know what's right and what's wrong. I remember when we were first come to the Sunshine Coast, uh, Nance and I took our kids to the, to the beach. We were going to have a picnic there and we set our blanket out on a nice quiet part of the beach and, and uh, we started to get our things ready and we noticed a guy out there that was surfing on his surfboard and, and uh, after we'd been there for a little while, he came in but he never had a stitch of clothes on. And I thought, that's crazy. And then we, went, we said, oh, we'll go for, he went home. And so we went for a bit of a walk up the beach and a young girl came out of the dunes and one of our teenage, or well, he wasn't a teenager at the time, came out of the dunes with not a stitch of clothes on her body and asked him if, he knew what time it was. And then she disappeared back in the dunes. We went up a bit further. You remember this, man? And there was a bunch of guys under an umbrella. And they never had a stitch of clothes on, but all their backsides were hanging out. I wanted to park my bike. But <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. Then we came back to our picnic and started our picnic again and a guy walked down the beach and he had a pair of Speedos on and I thought, well, praise God, he's got something on. And he went about 10 feet or 20 feet past us and pulled his Speedos off and went for a swim. I said, man, I said, we're getting out of here. But before I did, I went over and I dug a hole and I buried his Speedos. And I covered it over and he would never have found it. I guarantee he would have thought, I don't know how he got home. <laughs> I can imagine getting up into the car park. But you know, moral standards are just crazy. Kids on the internet today are doing silly things and and it's just messing up their lives. Moral standards, laziness, people don't want to work anymore. Finances, credit cards, welfare, poverty, homelessness. All the problems of the world. And you know, you can try to fix it, and the government tries to fix it, and everybody tries to fix it. But you see, the government's not the answer. What really is the answer? More churches, more welfare, higher wages, better working conditions. I believe we really need the church to get anointed. I really believe the church needs to get anointed, become who we are. Anointing. How do you get the anointing? Is there a cost? Zechariah 4, 6 says this, It is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. We quote the scripture so often, we know it by heart, and then after we've read it and quoted it, we go back and live like it didn't really, it isn't true. Or we live like I can do it in my own strength or my own power or my own ability. I want to speak a little bit this morning about the purpose of the Holy Spirit, the purpose of the anointing. It was prophesied in Isaiah 61. It was fulfilled in Luke 4.18, and it was poured out in Acts chapter 2. In Luke 4.18, this is what it says. Jesus, beginning his ministry, he lived on the planet for 30 years and hadn't really done anything in particularly that way, but went amongst 
the churches and things like that, and he did a lot of things, but he never entered into his ministry. And in Luke 4.18, he says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because. Because. There's got to be a because. Because it's so I can feel good. So I can feel the vibes. So I can have a feel good feeling. Friend, Jesus is not a joint or a feeling. He is the Son of God. He is the Son of God. No, it's because God has anointed Jesus to preach. Friend, we need anointed preachers. I heard Joe was preaching last Sunday, and I read on Facebook how God, somebody wrote and said, Joe preached an anointed message this morning. And I heard you people were clapping and shouting and you're very quiet this morning. So if you don't start to change, I'm going to get Joe back up here. <laughs> it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. We need anointed preachers. We need the anointing on our music. We need the anointing to flood our lives. We need something to get on the inside of us. God has anointed us to preach. You need the anointing to heal. It's not just a, 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 another thing, but we need the anointing to heal. We need the uh, anointing to proclaim liberty, recovery of sight to the blind. The world has lost sight of God. If you go out, out there in the world and start to speak to people about God, they wouldn't have a clue. I've told this story many times when we were witnessing out in, in Brisbane there and in, the, in King George Square. Went up to this man who was sitting on a, on near the fountain somewhere there and I, I went up to him and I said, have you found Jesus? And he stood to his feet and he looked with a startled look on his face and, and, and he looked like that and he said, he said, I didn't even know he was lost. And he thought I was talking to him about a guy by the name of Jesus that was lost. He didn't even know the, about a son of God who came and died and, and paid a price for him. The world, that, and I believe even the church, has lost sight of God. I believe the church is, 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 is so close pursuing exactly what the world is pursuing to bring liberty or freedom, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I believe this is the sole purpose of the anointing. The, the anointing is not just to make me feel good. The anointing is so as that it will put something on the inside of us that will cause us to stand, cause us to stand upon our conviction, cause us to stand when the tide of iniquity and, and the things of the world come against us, that we'll come and stand and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord that we will not uh, bow to the, to the onslaught of what the enemy is pouring out upon this world. Somebody has got to make a stand. When you've done all to stand, stand. Somewhere the church has got to rise up. Somewhere there's got to come something in our lives. I believe the Holy Spirit, the, the anointing is there for a purpose. The anointing is to take ordinary people and turn them into demon destroyers. How many people want to become demon destroyers? We hear about, we hear this morning at communion how what God did through Jesus Christ. We know that the fallen angels, they're all over the place and they go to and fro and they go seeking whom they may devour. We know that there's an enemy, there's an onslaught, there's, a, there's a, an assignment that the enemy has. But I want to tell you, friends, greater is the assignment that God has given to the church, that we can stand on His Word. I believe the anointing is for every man, woman, and child who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
It is not for some select few. It is not for some elite group of people. It is not for the pastors. It is not for the evangelists. It's not for those people that go around here and there. I want to tell you the anointing is for every human being, every person who calls upon the name of the Lord. You can be anointed. You can find the anointing. You can have the anointing over your life. But if you just think that it's for some select group of people, you're in for a shock. The anointings were every man. Remember, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Religion tries to use man's power to fill God's place. They tried to build a Tower of Babel once. Man's ability to build a tower, and God said they can do whatever they want to do. You must never allow dead traditions to prevent you from true worship. You should never allow things, the murmuring and, and the, some new doctrines and new philosophies that we're hearing today, the, 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 the things that you shouldn't do. You should never allow new traditions and things like that, false religious things, to stop you from entering into the presence of God to stop you from lifting up your hands, from stop you from entering in and, and calling upon that name and allowing the presence of God to get all over you. You must never allow dead tradition to prevent you from true worship. There is a way into the anointing. There is a way that you and I can enter into the anointing. And I believe that number one way is true worship. The Bible says, they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. This is not something that we do in church when we're singing songs or when we begin to go into free worship. When we start to lift up our hearts, allow the presence of God or allow the anointing to get, come on in. Not just something that we do, it's something there that is, it happens. Something that there's no words that can describe it. I can't explain it. It's something of a drawing power. It's something of the anointing. It's something of a hunger. It's something that's on the inside that just wants to worship the king. Express love. Express whatever it is we need to express. I believe another thing is passion. Passion. Passion, passion, passion that will, will cause a tear to, to form in the corner of your eye. Passion that will cause your heart to, to, to somehow or other, who knows what I'm talking about. Passion, passion for Him, passion for Him alone. Friend, when we come to church, don't come for me. Don't come for somebody else. Come for Him. I come here this morning with you, but I don't come for you. I come for Him. I come to worship Him. I come now at this point of time to, to, to honor Him and respect Him and give Him all the glory and, and to the best of my ability lift Him up. Another thing is desire. Desire, the Bible says, whatsoever things you desire. Do you desire to enter into His presence? Do you desire that anointing? Choice is another relationship. You see, the Lord sees our hearts. The Lord sees everything that goes on. A couple of weeks ago, Tom spoke at the offering time and I think it was Tom. He spoke about the woman who, was, who gave two mites and how Jesus was watching. And he made a comment about how this woman had given her all. Sometimes we look at, at the money aspect of that, but that wasn't really what he was talking about. He was just saying that she honors me more than she honors money. 
If God looks at money, if Jesus watches as you, as you sow money, how much more? How much more would He watch as you worship? How much more would He watch as you come into His presence, whether you fold your arms, whether you snug it off? How much more is He seeking those who will worship Him in spirit and in truth? I believe He is. Friend, I want to tell you this. I've, I've been a song leader and I've been this and I've been that. And there's happy, clappy, yappy times and they're, they're wonderful, amen. As you just get released. But I want to tell you, friends, those times have got to lead us to a place of worship. You've got to lead us to worship. How much more would He look upon our hearts? Don't treat God as if He's some kind of fool and that He doesn't care or He doesn't see. The world has an enormous pull on us. Enormous pull. We're bombarded by it. Bombarded by it. I don't know how they, how the, the, the media get hold of things or how that internet works or how that phone works, but Nancy's been looking at her, whatever it is she looks at there, and, and they must know that I'm getting a bit old because they're, 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 some of the things that they're trying to sell me. And I'm not going to go into that any further. I'm going to leave that to your imagination. Nancy said, I'm not open on that one. <laughs> the world has enormous pull on us and they're, they're at us and drawing on us. In Joshua 24 uh, verse 15, it says, Choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. The God which our fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. There is a cost to carry the anointing. Dying to self. Matthew 16, 24 and Luke 9, 23, Jesus said this. He said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You know what? We, we look at that and we think, oh, that's a bit hard and you know, we've got to do this and we've got to do that. But you see, God who created the heavens and the earth, who knows the pull of the world, He knows the works of the enemy, He knows what He's going to try to do to you, but He wants you to understand that if you want to live in victory, if you want to live above and not beneath, if you want to be able to get to the end of your road, and when we do cross the end of the road, whether it's, it's whether God comes back and we have the rapture or the whatever else you want to call it, or whether we go before that time, really what matters is how you lived your life. And God knows that there are many people because He said, you've got to understand this, he said, not everybody who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter my kingdom. You might come to me and say, in your name we prophesied, in your name we did this, and in your, we did all that, we healed, we did all these things. He said, hey, depart from me, I don't know you. Because you see, who are you going to serve? Are you going to take up your cross? God, God doesn't want to have a whip over you as a taskmaster. He's just saying, no, I want you to choose who you're going to serve. I want, I want you to know, I want you to deny your own wants. Because if you, if you allow your wants, your, your emotions and your feelings and everything like that and all, all that you want, it's going to take you to a way of destruction. I want you to know that, that that, because he says here, he says, take up your cross and follow me. In verse 26 it says, for what profit is it to a man 
if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? He's saying, look, the world is being poured out and the fury and the wrath of the enemy and everything like that is being poured out. And we see the kids today as they, they go to these rock concerts and they say that 80% of those kids are on drugs. We see the destruction in families. We see the mess. We see the suicides. The suicide rate is alarming. We see the, the, the way that it's been poured out, the, the heartache, the brokenness, the distraught, where kids would, would, would bombard another child to a point where the child commits suicide, where they'd harass them. This, it, it doesn't make sense. Man, when we were kids, we played marbles. Went down the river fishing. The world's gone crazy. God knows who is our creator. He says, look, he said, I know. If, because the, if you don't watch it, you'll, you'll get caught up in this thing. There's a man that they said, just, just in today's news, a man that, that's lived all his life in the surf, a surf lifesaver, a strong swimmer, everything like that goes down for a swim and the rip got hold of him and now he's gone. He, he would have got in that water. He'd think, oh, I can handle this. I've done it before. I can handle this. God who created us knows more about you and me than we do. And he says, hey, he said, take up your cross and follow me. Deny yourself. For what, for what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? The Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. If you, really, if you ever want real victory in your life, there is going to have to come a surrender of your will to God's will. That's all he's really saying there. Not my will, but thine be done. It's not easy to surrender, but it's possible. I believe this act is one of the doorways to the anointing and to the supernatural. Wanting to please the lover of your soul should be our main motivation. Don't confuse what I'm saying with self-righteousness and spiritual pride. This is where religion wants to take us. Religion is a, comes from a Greek word that means bondage. It wants to take us into bondage. Don't confuse what I'm saying with self-righteousness. I don't know about you, but I've made a few mistakes. We'll all make mistakes and fall from time to time in our desire to please God. Our desire, and you, you make a mistake. Don't get discouraged. Don't beat yourself up. God sees our heart. How many people are glad about that? If you want the anointing, be a follower of Jesus. Do what he wants you to do. About a hundred years ago, in LA, there was a small church with a half-blind black man named William Seymour. One thing this church had in common was they just wanted God. If you want success, friend, just want God. Seymour would sit on the platform with his head in an apple crate. Didn't want to be distracted by what he could see. God's power 
fell in that place in such force, thousands were saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. There were creative miracles, deliverance, and more. The Assemblies of God Church was birthed out of that movement. The Four Square Church was moved out of that, was birthed out of that, and many others. The ripple of that revival is still touching people today. I've been touched by that. Anybody else been touched by that? So, let's just let God build His church. Hmm? Let us just keep going after God. The disciples prayed this prayer. Lord, glorify your son by stretching forth your hand to heal. And the Bible says this, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen? Let's just let God build his church. We get the musicians back. This morning, earlier in the piece, I was speaking about, I felt that there were people here today that, that had either drifted a little bit away or been affected by certain things. And where perhaps you might have been on fire before, you know that the fire's gone out a bit. You know that you're not in the place with God that you should be. That God wants more. See, sometimes when we, we read some of these scriptures about taking up your cross, and we, we think that somehow or other that that is a restriction, denying yourself. I don't know how many times, if I'm real honest with you, how I really wish right now that I would have denied myself a few times. It's when I've gone after something. Man, I, I wanted a boat. I wanted a boat so bad. I just didn't want a little boat. I wanted a big boat. And through a circumstance, I came into a little bit of money. This boat. 38 foot mariner, twin 320 horsepower cat engines, two bedrooms, ensuite, kitchen, flybridge, three meter tender, the 15 horsepower outboard on the back of it. Cost me 165000 plus another thousands upon thousands. I hardly used it. And at the end of the day, I sold it for $90,000. Oh, I wish. Oh, I wish. Oh, I wish. <laughs> David, I wish. I wish. I wish. I wish. <laughs> Oh, I wished, I wished, I wished. I would have denied myself. We're at the bank and the man that was buying the boat had a big grin on his face and I had a big grin on my face. And the girl that was signing the papers, I looked at her and I said, you're looking at the two happiest men in town. He's happy he's bought the boat and I'm happy I sold it. You see, there was a time there when I went into an investment. Sounded good. $100,000. 12% interest. I got two payments and then the man went broke. <laughs> God told me not to do it. I know God told me not to do it. 
Nancy told me not to. I say, easy come, easy go. <laughs> oh, if only we would. See, it's freedom. It's God wants to save us. He doesn't want to bind us. He doesn't want you to go and nail yourself at the cross. He doesn't want you to live a miserable life. He doesn't want you to live miserable. He wants to save us. He wants to set us free from ourself. Anybody else need to be set free from yourself? Let's stand at our feet today. The anointing of God is who can help us. If you've got a need here today or if God's speaking to you or you just know that you're not in that place where you should be and you want to surrender to God. Just want to yield to Him. Let Him have His way. This altar's open today. I want you to come. Next Sunday, we've got Kendra Greening here, who's a prophetic man. I really encourage you to come and it's been a great blessing to my life. So I ask you today, just come, sweetie. Come a little bit closer. Others, if you want to come, join this lady today. just want you to touch me, God. See, God looks at your heart. He's not going to get a surprise. He's not going to get angry or anything like that. He watches our hearts. If he watches and if he looks, if he looks at the offering, how much more would he look at you? Just yielding to him. Just let the Spirit of God. Let me say it again. Taking up your cross and following Jesus is not bondage. It's liberty. Oh, if only, if only, if only I would have listened. If only I would have listened. If only I would have listened. How much He would have saved me. How much hurt. How much brokenness. How much disappointment. How much? Just let God get around your life today. You might need more of the anointing over your life. Or you might want to open yourself to the anointing. Just let it come. Just come. Let the Spirit of God minister to you today. You father me father. with holy love, with grace and Jesus. Peace.